Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we are apparently giving away the award for the least likely game that I ever expected to be looking at on Indie Impressions. Uh, today's game is The Hunter by Expansive Worlds who really needs to rethink their naming scheme because the acronym for Expansive Worlds is EW and that says EW. Uh, regardless, that's kind of a side note. So why in the hell am I looking at a hunting game you're probably wondering? Well, that's a perfectly valid thing to be wondering, um, considering that's kind of against almost everything this channel is really here to stand for. Um, but after I posted the video for In Ruins, uh, someone posted a comment on Reddit for it saying that, you know, it, theoretically the, the proposition was, what if there was a game sort of like In Ruins, but you could wander around, you know, forest, countryside, and, you know, see trees everywhere and all that good stuff. So somebody thought, hey, this is kind of a good solution for that, and they said it was probably one of the most accurate uh, sort of simulations of that sort of thing that's available. And that really brought us to an interesting point, because this game is actually free to play, uh, and while I'm still talking, I'm actually just going to start it up so we can move on here. Um, this game's free to play, and what happens is you pay to unlock weapons to shoot things. Now, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. I'm not really interested in shooting things. In fact, I would probably pay money not to shoot things. So that leads us to another interesting quandary. So if my goal is actively to do the opposite of what the developer or publisher wants me to do with this piece of software, have I requisitioned this as a piece of found art? What happened here? I'm very confused by the whole thing, uh, but I do really like the proposition of being able to wander around in the wilderness and just enjoy nature. I mean, I actually personally like hiking. I like nature generally. And uh, even though, you know, I'm kind of a nerdy, techy kind of guy and I spend a lot of time on the computer, um, I absolutely think that there is a lot of wonderful stuff out there to go and see and do. Um, I just tend to not do it as much as I should. But it doesn't mean that I value it any less. So... Uh, you know, I've never really played a lot of hunting games. I know that there are a bunch out that exist, uh, primarily the Cabela's series, and in a very strange way, I have also kind of wanted to play them just to explore. But then it's just, the whole point is to shoot stuff, right? I mean, that's why you buy that type of game. And I've just always sort of not been interested in that idea. I mean, the, these animals are just wandering around in nature, and we're going to go find them and kill them. That seems awfully barbaric for a, a society where we actually don't need to really do that as individuals as much. I mean, granted, I know that's still happening on a massive scale, and that's how we have the industry that allows us to survive. Um, but, you know, as far as individuals, we have the privilege of living in a culture where we individually don't have to hunt and catch our own food. Now, I do understand survivalists, uh, you know, it's a little liberating to know that you can actually go out and handle your, your business like that. And uh, the, the concept of firing guns is kind of cool in its own right. I just prefer not to fire them at things. Like, at targets is fine, but at living things is just... I don't really like that idea. And that's always... It's left me with this love-hate relationship and violence in video games. Like, I have no problem with violence, generally. It's just where it crosses over into real life. That's an issue for me, clearly. And um, I'm not interested in participating in those sorts of things. But I have no issue with people who want to target shoot or people who go out... You know, shoot bow and arrows, shoot pistols at stuff. I mean, just not, don't kill people. Don't kill, you know, innocent stuff. But I don't want to make this too much about, like, a political thing. I did want to actually sort of look at this game on its own merits, because I have to say, it's quite beautiful. I mean, this came out in 2009, from what I can tell, and uh, it's completely free. Like I said, it's free to play, you just apparently pay for weapons. Um, well, I'm not going to actually shoot the... Oh, equip your weapon and try to hit a vital organ. Hit in the heart or lung will reduce unnecessary suffering and avoid... Do you people read this? Like, what the hell? The heart is located in the area above the front legs. So you care enough to kill this thing, but you don't care enough to actually research its anatomy to know where its heart is. Alright, well... I'm just gonna see, does it give me a weapon? It actually does. Okay, so I thought I actually don't get any weapons here. Um, crap, how do I make it go away? I don't actually want a weapon. 
Okay, so I'm going to take this moment to uh, quickly mention how I keep hitting the toggle to turn off fraps by accident because I keep looking for keys for things. And that's very unfortunate because I just went on and recorded about five more minutes of gameplay of this and then came to the realization I was not recording. So uh, I reloaded the game, went back to the point I was at, and here we are again. Um, so actually that did help me in a way because it gave me a chance to look through the options menu to check my key commands and stuff, and then I realized that they had put Sprint on Caps Lock, which is like, that's like a, a 1998 move when it comes to keyboard bindings. Um, unfortunately though, it means that you missed out on the hilarious moment where I walked up to the deer and uh, bonked it in the nose with my gun. Not intentionally, actually. Uh, let's see if I can recreate that. And apparently it actually will uh, know if you're running or walking, because it can hear you really well since they spent apparently quite a bit of time modeling the AI in this, uh, which is actually just a joke considering I was just walking up to one a second ago. But yeah, you do move kind of slowly, I have to say. Uh, apparently you have binoculars, but I don't have binoculars, so that's a little sad. Hey, a butterfly. Oh, they even put the little red safety tip on the end of the gun there, because it's very realistic. I have to hand it to them, though. The graphics in this are quite beautiful. Um, I have very little issue with the sky. I mean, there's like a weird seam right there, but other than that, this is maybe one or two steps under photorealistic looking. Um, and it's not actually even at the absolute max settings. There's a few settings above this uh, in terms of, like, a you know, filtering and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this guy's got a really nice quality to the light. It actually looks sort of like it's radiating the light properly. And the sun's got the usual requisite solar flares and stuff, so that's no big deal. Hello, dear. I am here, and you are here, and you are apparently completely deaf. I've never seen a deer this oblivious. I could just walk up right next to him. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey, hey, hey. I could actually recreate that scene from Napoleon Dynamite where the cow sniffs the... No, I wouldn't do that. That's cruel. Alright, so the deer's going to go over there, and it's probably going to give yeah the message saying, you know, uh, don't worry about that. We'll send you another deer into this big open field to shoot. Because that's fair, right? You know, we have high-powered rifles and technology and tracking and pheromones and camouflage and cover and posts, and they have, you know, their very sort of poor ability to detect if we're near them. That's about it. Imagine if the deer started getting some sweet technology and fighting back. Oh, there was actually a game about that a long time ago, I think. Um, I think it was like a Mac game. Because there used to be a series called Deer Hunter or something, and I think they turned it on its head and, and had the deer hunting the people or something. Regardless, that's about as far away from this topic as we could get. So let's take a moment and look around and actually sort of take in what we're looking at here because, you know, I, I I was hesitant to want to play something like this, but I completely agree with the poster on Reddit who gave me this idea that this is actually a really, really nice looking game. Um, and I believe they said this was the Just Cause 2 engine, which I have, you know, a lot of respect for. I think that's a really nice engine. And I think it looked phenomenal, actually, for its time. And I think it may still even look quite phenomenal. The The draw distance on it is... I don't know if I've seen anything like that. Uh, these giant mountains and valleys, and you can just see further past everything. And uh, this moment right here is actually quite beautiful. I'm getting some nice solar uh, flares, some god rays coming in through the pine trees here. They're subtle, but they're definitely there. And it actually has a little bit of that... Uh, like a bloom effect on the edges of the, what we're going to call leaves. Although, uh, you know, usually needles here. Yeah, those would be needles. Um, yeah, that's actually really nice looking. You can totally get the sense of transparency that the light is playing off of it. Um, and this is definitely giving me a bit of that, like, Skyrim feeling, like we're exploring in the wilderness and stuff. And there's not a lot of games where I feel like they've really nailed that feeling of, like, this is the floor of the woods, and I think they've really done that here. Um, if they wanted to make a virtual hiking simulator and they put some trails in this, like, you could totally pass that off. Is there even such a thing? Because I would totally be interested in playing a virtual hiking simulator. I know that sounds ridiculous. And in just about every possible manner, but as far as, like, a nice tech demo, I couldn't think of a cooler way to do that. 
I mean, even, okay, so give us a, um, like, a minor goal and call it a geocaching simulator. No way, you did not just, oh, go screw yourself. I was having a good time, and you freaking forced me onto the trail again? Alright, here's what we're going to do about this. Uh, we'll hope this doesn't break our recording or something, but we're going to actually move up to the next tutorial. I'm going to keep going through tutorials until there's no more tutorials left, and then I don't have to worry anymore about that happening, I hope. Oh, and also worth noting, the uh, the first dialog box that pops up when you first come into the game, it says, like, Please ignore the slightly surreal arrows. Like, okay, that's how we're going to talk to ourselves here? Slightly, or, or surreal, we're going to throw that word around? Uh, itching to get your hands on a... F what? A fat long tail? Okay, so this is designed by Hicks for Hicks, because apparently that's how they talk to each other. Will they come running like yotes? I don't even know what this means. Get cackling and use the... What the... Alright, apparently hunters speak a completely different language. Um, I've been speaking English my whole life, and I always run into trouble with that sort of thing. Um, I, I know you guys probably... We don't have anything to worry about. You guys are cool, but... <laughs> speaking the, the language of hunting is not me. Uh, restart tutorial. I don't have an option to leave this one. I don't want to equip the pheasant caller. Well, I guess that's maybe something different to look at. This is one of the strangest things I've ever done in a video game, actually. It looks like I'm blowing into a cork off a wine bottle or something. Equip hunter mate? I'll try it once. Oh, that's the hunter mate. Oh, I got so excited, I thought I could just put away everything for a second. I'm not interested in this. I want to actually just go look around. Um, no, I'm really, I'm fine. Please, stop. Is there any end to these tutorials, for God's sake? Resume, restart, tutorial, that's all I can do. There's no skipping anymore. This is, like, mandatory. It's like, you'll never be a hunter if you can't call these pheasants. And walking is just arduous. Nobody should walk. I mean, I guess you're, if you're trying to creep or something and get the drop on some deer and, you know, cut their intestines out or whatever you do, I guess that would be something. That is quite a beautiful landscape, I have to say. And, and looking at these uh, electrical towers, too, um, I'm getting a little bit of that feeling of, like, Day Z. But I think this is way higher fidelity, actually. Day Z was okay looking, but... It felt kind of blocky at times, and it's totally going to grab me and, like, pull me away and put me somewhere else. I would love to walk up this mountain here. Please stop telling me about that. I really don't care about the hunting element. Uh, somebody needs to seriously get this game, uh, figure out a way to liberate it from its awful, awful launch method, and I'll explain that in a minute, and then mod it so all the hunting elements are gone, and just replace it with, like, a walking stick. I don't know, something like that. And you can buy, like, different hiking boots and go geocaching and look for stashes with your GPS. And then you can find treasure in the GPS areas and then spend that on better hiking boots or some ridiculous thing. And bottles of water. Uh, so yeah, the, the launch mechanism for this is one of the most strange ones I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so what you do is you... First you have to sign up on the website, of course, uh, which is, I think, thehunter.com. And after you've signed up on the website, it's going to, you know, give you an account and everything. You pick, like, a, an identity, and you give yourself a name. So you're, like, creating sort of like an MMO character. And then it's going to let you download the thing called the Launcher. And what the Launcher is, is really weird. I mean, you get this application, which is going to sit wherever you put it, and it's going to actually grab a close to a gigabyte file, or set of files. And then after that, once you have them, you still have to go back to the website, uh, which will then bring you back to the launcher, which will then allow you to launch the program. So I don't know if any of that actually makes sense. Uh, I can't really figure out a reason why that would be. I mean, they're giving you 
a website and telling you you have to log in from the website, but the website brings you back to the actual launcher. So they both require each other, yet neither one of them seems necessary. Why can't I just launch the application from an EXE like a normal program? Um, I would really like for this program to actually be completely free of these boundaries and just exist as something I can play with, because I would really like to walk around this environment and stop being told what to do. Uh, so yeah, th that's what I said before about like liberating this as a piece of art from the developers who have different intentions. Oh, I would also like to add a jump button if you could, because there is no jump button, and that's... I mean, it's completely reasonable for what we're doing here, but I, I would rather it, you know, existed. And I have to say, the animations are even, like, really quite good. If you look at him playing with that little duck call or whatever, the pheasant call, it's very smooth, and I think that actually looks decent. Press mouse 1, then mouse 2. I'm going to try and do it so this will maybe go away. I think I've failed to ID the audio cue. I mean, I guess the answer here is if I just uh, play with this thing enough, it'll probably take me out of tutorial mode and eventually I can get to just walking around or whatever. Uh, but, you know me, I like to do impressions videos where I actually play them from the beginning. And that's the unfortunate thing for people who inherently might get what this is about, or don't want to play the game the way they want you to. Uh, you're kind of forced into suffering through this until it's done. I would also like them to take a, uh, like a rock climbing mini game and superimpose that upon it. Because uh, that's the one thing that I think these games all tend to lack, is mobility as a person. I mean, if you've ever walked around in the wilderness, and I'm pretty sure most of all of us have at some point, uh, you've encountered situations where you have somewhat unsure footing, you might have ma like uh, marshy type of ground, you might have different textures you're walking over, you might have large uh, rocks you need to climb over, or you know uneven rocks you need to make sure you don't sprain your ankle. I mean, if they want to be an actual simulation of this concept, they really need to actually get into the more really, really closely fine details. Uh, and I think they actually did a great job with simulating this fauna and flora of the, the wilderness stuff. I think that actually looks great. And I, I think this is probably the nicest one I've ever seen for that, and I think I might have already said those exact words before, but it bears repeating, because it's kind of a thing. It's a, it's a bit of a big deal. And that is really scenic looking. Like, that is very close to being photorealistic. And it's entirely rendered. The water looks like crap, though. That's not good. Oh, it's got that awful thing where they... I don't know how you describe this, but there's like a shader effect where it grabs the edges of everything and does something to it. Like, you can see it on this uh, GPS thing. It's taking that border, which is sort of like a dark black sort of silhouette, and it's just doing whatever that watery thing is to it. And that doesn't make any sense, because I'm not in the water. It's not reflecting it in the water. And there doesn't seem to be any kind of water interaction regardless. Imagine if they made, like, Minecraft 2 was like this. I mean, I know that's completely contrary to the point of Minecraft, and I know that's not at all possible, and I'm not even trying to speculate that it could be possible, but I'm just saying, as a theoretical, just sort of, you know, suspend your disbelief for five seconds and just say, what if something like Minecraft 2 looked like this, and we take it and we make it into, like, an MMO? I mean, that's really the type of game that I want to see happen in some time in the future. I, when I was a little kid and I was thinking of what would the future of video games be like, I really did imagine stuff like that. You know, a full, like, life, city-building, town-building, interacting simulation. I can't decide what I think about these waves. I think they might look like crap, but something about the quality of them is better than usual. I think it's the fact that they actually seem to map to the ground, which is something I'm kind of not used to. Most of the time the waves are just uh, based on a plane, and the plane just usually intersects with the terrain, and th that means it just goes into the ground. Like, the waves will come in, and they will just disappear through the sand. 
uh, instead of actually going up, reaching their precipice and then going back down or whatever the proper word is for that. I really want to walk for long enough to go check out those mountains and stuff, but this is going to be a very, very long video if I do that. And I really, really wish we could stop talking about this tutorializing crap, because, yeah, I get the point. And while we're at it, I mean, if we're superimposing all sorts of gameplay conventions onto this idea, why don't we add tree climbing into the mix? Because, you know, any survivalist uh, should want to, you know, occasionally climb a tree to get a good idea of where they are if they don't have a GPS. Um, and if we're getting that far into things, then we may as well just ditch the GPS or have it be an option like a different gameplay mode. Uh, make a survival simulator and have it look legit. You know, give yourself real conditions to worry about. And I think we're actually reaching the point where a game like that could really be a success. I mean, both for graphical fidelity, all the audio involved, and just the gameplay, I think, could actually work. Oh, excuse me. Um, I mean, I could see this exact engine just taken as a base, take exactly what's right here, and throw on all those extra things and make a game out of it, just take it in a different direction. I would love it. I would play that. I would pay for that. And you know, it's kind of interesting, because I sort of almost want to recommend that you guys check this out, but after seeing the amount of crap you have to go through to get into it, I don't know, it's kind of more trouble than it's worth, I think. So in, uh, in the In Runes episode, I was talking about projecting shadows and what those usually do, uh, and I mentioned that they often look sort of grainy and weird. This is a great example of that, and uh, I may be able to actually tune up the filtering a little higher to make those edges look a little crisper, but it, when you look at it on my hand, uh, as I struggle to sort of push that around, you can actually totally get a good sense for what I mean. It's really blurry, the filtering is not crisp, and uh, on the ground it looks sort of decent. Still not perfect, though. And I heard this has a phenomenal day-night cycle also, which I haven't actually seen night yet. But so far, the qualities of light have been really, really well done, so I'd really like to see night, actually. And maybe that might be the thing that uh, will press you guys to want to check this out. I'm not sure why I'm walking on this road when there is so much wilderness on every side of me. And there's apparently a really big map I should be able to look at. Why can't I look at it, though? I thought it was on M. If you put a map in your game, it's supposed to be on M. It's just sensible to do that. I'm also sort of hoping I'm just going to like press a certain button and it's going to be like, tutorial mode disabled, but no, it's not going to do that. It would never do that. The minigame slot is empty. You can equip a minigame by using the inventory. Do I have an inventory? No. I haven't finished all the tutorials, so I don't get an inventory to, to work on. I might even have to buy an inventory, who knows. I haven't looked into any of what the uh, elements of free-to-play are in this. Like, I, I know you obviously buy guns and stuff, and probably ammo, because that seems like the next logical conclusion to go, uh, to, go to. But I would also guess probably things like, you know, game-cheating kind of things, like deer pheromones and stuff to attract them, or camouflage pieces, you know, uh, tents or whatever they use. Oh, look at this lake. This is quite nice. I would actually pay a few dollars for them to just, you know, disable the tutorials, that's something. My uh, impatience is showing, my apologies. Uh, that's not really that important. And you may as well add a fishing minigame since we're here. Um, make this the whole experience, right? What happens if I walk around in this water? Anything? Nothing. I can go into it, it looks like up to a point. Yeah, then I get the no walkie symbol in the corner there. What kind of survivalist is this? This dude doesn't even go swimming. May as well add a cat fist and mini game. You know, where you and your, your partner Cletus or whatever, you go out, you drink a bunch of Bud Lights, and you go stand in the lake, and uh, you do some cat fisting. Yeah, where you, uh, basically, what they do is they, I guess, put some kind of bait or something in their hand, and they just put their hands in the water, and they wait for giant, giant catfish to uh, crawl up on them, and they, the, the catfish will bite their hands or whatever, and then they uh, they just take their hand out of the water, and there's a giant fish hanging off of it. And I guess they feed their family for a week or something, because those fish are huge. 
I was kind of hoping to check out this uh, settlement over here. There's a cabin or something. I was headed in that direction for quite a while. I'm not seeing it, though. Uh, I think it's probably just sort of like a, a guide marker. Like, it's telling me it's in this direction, but I have to get to that point for it to show up. Definitely loving these hills, though. I mean, the diversity of the landscape is beautiful. The trees really are diverse, too. Uh, so that's one thing that totally takes me out of the elements, is as soon as I see two identical models standing next to each other, which I may or may not have just done... Um, well, if if I did see that, maybe they had the courtesy to at least turn it. But it looks like they've made hundreds and hundreds of different pieces of uh, foliage for this. I mean, between the flowers and the little bits of grass, the the different heights that everything sits at, the insects, uh, the different the variety in the terrain, you know, fallen logs and tree bits and dirt textures, grass textures, rock textures, all of that seems very very well modeled. And uh, I'm totally digging that. And the level of distance is just beautiful, too. Like, you can totally see detail off in that far. And I know it's, like, not very good detail. You can actually tell from here that there's just sort of, like, big missing holes and stuff. Uh, but it's enough that from this distance, I feel like it's fairly convincing. And when you factor in the sky and everything, like, the level of distance with the sky looks really nice and the haze on it kind of would like to have the binoculars, but, you know, maybe that's another thing. Maybe I should let's play this. How long can I play walking around in the Hunter without shooting anything uh, and still be entertained by it? That could be a thing. Who knows? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's a nice scenic shot for you. Wow, even the water's got a really nice level of detail on it. Um, looking at the water, I'm seeing there's these really different shades... I think it's even reflecting the clouds, which is something I've hardly ever seen. Um, but yeah, there's different shades in the water with the depth, and then it actually does that thing where it realistically looks lighter as it gets further away, which is just an optical illusion, essentially, but it does mimic what your eye sees in that uh, situation. Man, I would love to play an MMO in a situation like this, a survivalist MMO. I mean, that probably wouldn't make a lot of sense, because being... You know, alone is kind of the key point in surviving, but regardless, I'm betting you could probably buy with your real money a freaking quad for this game, sponsored by Mountain Dew. And if that's the case, screw them, uh, but I do do give them credit where credit's due. There's a freaking car in this woods. I guess this is Cletus' old car. Either that or he parked it down here when he went catfisting and he never came back. Yeah, the wheels are gone. Somebody stole the wheels. Unless nature reclaimed them. Maybe there's a bear out there somewhere just rolling. <laughs> just rolling down the hills. Who knows? And I haven't said a lot about the audio design, but I think the audio design is quite well done as well. I can hear a lot of ambient... Um, you know, birds chirping, nature sounds, and they all seem to be isolated in stereo in a way that makes some sense. I am wearing headphones, but to be honest, I have the sound turned down pretty far because I wasn't sure what kind of audio cues we're going to be dealing with. This is the type of game where I probably should have left the sound up quite a ways. Uh, but it did have some, not loud, but like slightly more overbearing uh, opening intro music when I started up the game at the very beginning. Look at these, the reeds even have shadows on them and everything. That's some pretty good detail, and everything's moving with the wind. I mean, this is always a thing you get into, but uh, if you look at the the way that they're not really rooted to the ground, they're just all sort of moving. Um, I think what happens is they they map these things to planes, like a bunch of flat, like picture bars on a jail cell, and what they do for wind is basically they just make all of those things shift left and right, back and forth, uh, so they're opposite each other. And they don't really regard much for the physics of, you know, how plants are rooted into the ground. They just sort of move the whole image around. So these are the little minor, minor, minor details that I could see being improved upon in the years to come uh, if we do look for future installments in games like this. And I really would like to see more of this stuff. I would just like to see it less targeted and more opened as an interpretive e experience. But given the motivation that usually drives people to create these types of games, I don't usually see them uh, going
going too far into the art angle on this type of thing, which is a shame. I would really like to see some really intelligent... And I'm not saying these people who made this game are not intelligent, because clearly this is a, a, a bit of a work of art in itself, so I can't say they're not intelligent. But I would like to see a more uh, open... Uh, I don't know what the open emotional state to that you could have other experiences here than just shooting animals in the heart. Yeah, that's kind of the thing, I guess. A little less shooting them in the heart, a little bit more embracing the fact that we actually love nature. And you know, at the heart of hunting, I thought, and I, I'm not a hunter myself, so I'm probably wrong on this, but I thought that the reason they did it was some sort of really confusing relationship with nature's so beautiful that we have to keep it for ourselves and kill it kind of appreciation like if that makes sense it's like a psychological uh i don't know what the right word is but they're they're taking it they're compartmentalizing it they're saying nature's really beautiful we want it so much and we love it so much we appreciate it we just want to take it for ourselves and make it ours and they want to live in that environment and you know think about that environment and when you think about what that results in, in terms of commercial uh, reappropriation of that idea, here's where we are, and these tutorials won't go away. You see what I'm saying? I think there's some meat to that concept. You know, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think there's some serious meat to that. So, um, if you out there, if you're a game developer, if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who worked on this, or whatever, um, let it be known, if I could speak for even the very smallest segment of the gaming population right now, and it, my apologies if I don't speak for you in particular, but I feel like a few of the guys that, that frequent my channel, are we're all kind of on the same page on this type of stuff. Um, I would love to see this expanded upon into something we could all really appreciate, whether we hunt or not. Uh, because maybe we just adore nature in itself, and that's it. We don't want to kill stuff, we just want to explore uh, without the risk of getting ticks on us, without, you know, the risk of falling to our deaths and getting our arms trapped under rocks and having to cut them off and break our bones, like, all of that shit. I mean, I love the risk occasionally, but sometimes you just want to appreciate nature in a completely safe environment as a simulation. Uh, and maybe I'm kind of a jerk for even saying that because it, it really is sort of removing the point. But it would be cool if something like that existed. Okay, what on earth is that wave doing right there? Okay, th this is where the physics have gone wrong. Um, you know, I also have to say, it's kind of weird I haven't run into any animals. Maybe it's because I'm still in the tutorials, they haven't unlocked animals yet. But uh, I would think I would have run into, like, some chipmunks or squirrels or, like, pheasants or, you know, birds just walking around. Yeah, see, that's not quite right. Uh, waves don't really do that, but, you know, it's not really their fault. They They've made a physics model... And in theory, it should work, but, you know, they got to add a little exception for uh, greater than 45 degree angle walls. <laughs> Unless we've got some serious velocity, and we're not exactly looking at a wave pool here. Man, I would actually really like to keep exploring this. I would love to see if there's more types of environment, like, you know, marsh areas or swampy, kind of nasty looking spots. But I'm totally, totally digging the, the art style to this and the really the beauty of what has been created here. So I think I've beaten it the, the point here to a pretty much a fine red mist at this point. I would have said pulp, but I think I've gone a bit beyond that. Um, if there was a horse, yeah, it is it is vapor now. Uh, but, you know, hopefully you get the point. <laughs> And I think we should probably wrap this one up. I think this has been a very long episode, but, you know, I think it was warranted uh, to explain exactly why I would bother covering something as weird as The Hunter. You know, a free-to-play uh, online hunting game on my game, my uh, my channel about indie games and, you know, artistic beauty and all of that. Um, so there is inspiration to be had here. It's just kind of obfuscated under a few layers of consumerism and uh, intentions that maybe don't apply to me. <laughs> so let me know if you agree in the comments. Uh, let me know if you think I'm a terrible jerk for suggesting that they should make nature simulations for shut-ins who want to stay indoors and look at the world around them but are too scared to go out and do it themselves. 
just let me know whatever you think. And uh, remember, as always, to head on over to www.indie-impressions.com. That's the website where I post every single night's video. And you can feel free to join our ever-growing community and leave comments on the forums, uh, earn pixels, and uh, progress in your user account. That's uh, that's the thing about the Indie Impressions website. I set it up so uh, basically every day you can earn points, and the points add up and accumulate. You get ranks and stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun, yeah, especially if you're into uh, RPG-esque gameplay, like a lot of us probably are. Uh, and the goal is eventually when you accumulate these points, you will eventually be able to spend them on stuff. I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. We're still working on it. There's still some stuff to be done. Uh, but the formation, the, the foundation, the core elements are there. And I would love to see all of you guys over at that website and make an account. And we can all talk and have a great time. All right, so that will wrap us up for today's episode, The Hunter. Uh, get it if you want. It's a pain in the ass to install. If you enjoy looking around at this stuff, though, it's worth it. It's free. So that's today, and I hope to see you back again tomorrow for another episode because I do these every single day. So I hope you have a lovely night, and thank you so much for watching. See you later, guys.